Hello guys, welcome back to our lectures. In this lecture, we're going to start talking about floating point arithmetic. So any uh, computer should uh, be able to, deal, or any processor should be able to deal with floating point numbers. Like for example, you know, 4.5. Uh, 4 so that's a floating, that's not an integer. So there should be, you know, a kind of uh, special registers special circuits they call it uh, fpu unit or uh, floating point unit it's like a coprocessor that deal specifically with uh, floating point numbers like 4.5 here also uh, in order to uh, deal with you know uh, floating point they should be also converted to binary so all these numbers here should be converted in a way uh, to binary like this like for example 1.01 you know, 2 to the power, you know, minus 5. Okay, something like this. So, in that case here, you know, uh, there is something that we didn't talk about previously, about, uh, point, uh, you know, float, uh, binary numbers in, specific, uh, in general. Like, for example, if you have uh, a number with binary, with some, uh, you know, uh, with a floating point, a binary number with a floating point. Like, for example, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, point, 1, 1. How we convert this into, uh, you know, decimal? So this is, for example, 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 4, point. Uh, as you see here, each time we increase the exponent by 1. If you go in that way, you decrease the exponent by 1. So this, this is 2 to the power of minus 1, which is basically half. This is 2 to the power of minus 2, which is, you know, 1 over 4, and so on. Okay, so this is basically, you know, uh, the way we can convert, you know, uh, binary numbers with floating point into, you know, uh, decimal. Okay, uh, this is called decimal point, if you are talking about decimal uh, fractions, but this is now, we can call it binary point, because now we are, bo we are talking about, you know, binary numbers or floating by numbers. And of course, in C, for example, C++, these numbers are defined as uh, float or double. Uh, there should be a kind of standard in order to express or encode or represent these numbers in, in, a, in a processor. So how to represent this? Because, for example, a, a number like this, 1.011, uh, 2 to the power minus 2, it can be, you know, re represented like this. It can be also represented like this. 2 to the minus 3. So how we can represent this, that in, in, the, in a processor. So here, here comes, you know, the IEEE standard. So before this uh, IEEE standard 754, uh, there were multiple of representations. And, you know, of course, for each representation, you're going to have uh, a different algorithm to do the arithmetic like the addition or subtraction or you know multiplication but you know hence comes this this kind of standard to represent you know uh, floating point numbers and uh, almost any uh, you know all processors now adopt such kind of representation this representation comes into form what's called single precision and what's called double precision okay double precision means you know it's more accurate as we're going to see so we're gonna need more bits to represent the number. So, how we represent a, a floating point uh, number or a fraction number uh, using the IEEE standard? So, for any uh, you know number, we get we we will re, we get, we gonna you know divide the number into three parts: the sign part, the exponent part, and the fraction part. Okay. So, let's say 1.0011, 2 to the power of minus 4, okay? So, minus 4 here is basically, you know, the exponent. And this is called the fraction part. And the whole number is called significant. And here's the sign is positive. So basically, this is basically, you know, 
how we can represent the number so for any register any floating point register that can carry floating point numbers will carry you know three will be divided into three parts in single precision uh, the fraction part will be eight bits uh, 11 bits uh, eight bits yes eight bits or the exponent i'm sorry will be eight bits and for double precision it will be 11 bits so we have 11 bits to represent the exponent and for the fraction part it will be 23 bits for single 52 bits in double that's why the double precision is more accurate because like for example for a number like pi which is 3.4 you know and it's it has infinite number of, of, of fraction digits here so it will be represented with the double precision in a more accurate way because you have more fraction part or fraction bits to represent the fraction part or, the, or what's called the mantissa so it's called fraction or mantissa both are correct the sign here, 1 means post, uh, negative and 0 means positive. That's why here it's uh, minus 1 to the S. So if S is 1, that means minus 1, which is negative. If it's S 0, uh, anything uh, to the power of 0 will be equal to 1, which is positive. And now what is this pious weird stuff that we add here? Okay, So the exponent might be negative. And might be positive and that will make so we need for example if, if we stick to the positive and negative you know uh, uh, you know representation we must have like for example uh, two complement stuff to do it but this will decrease the range so in order to eliminate to, to in order to eliminate to eliminate such uh, complication we're gonna add uh, for any exponent, you know, uh, a bias, a positive bias. So all exponents will appear to us as positive. So for example, you know, uh, if the exponent is minus 1, we're going to add to it 127. So it will appear to us 126. So if, you, if we see in the exponent part 126, that means the actual exponent is minus 1. Okay, and that's for signal, single precision. For double precision, we add, uh, you know, one two or three or one thousand two hundred and three. So it will be minus one plus one two or three, which is one two o two. Good. Now let's check the range by which we can, uh, you know, represent a fraction number. For single precision, you know, let's start by single precision first. For the exponent, the all zeros and all ones are reserved. And why they are reserved? Because we have, uh, you know, special cases like infinity and minus infinity, uh, not a number, nan. All these special cases of numbers, you know, are represented with, you know, these special cases with all zeros and all ones exponent. So basically, the smallest will be all zeros. Remember, it's 8 bits and the least significant bit will be 1, which is basically 1. But this is, uh, you know, this is basically 1 minus 27. So it's minus 126. And the, the other fraction part will be all zeros in that case. So in that case here, the actual number, the fraction number is basically one point all zeros, 23 zeros, two to the power of minus 126. And wanna, I want to say here that this one is implicit. So we don't, so the actual significant is one point 
you know, uh, the fraction part. The fraction part is all zeros. It doesn't have one zero. So since we know that every time we're gonna read a number, it will have a one. So you know, uh, we're gonna add this one here. So we assume all the time that we have one in the uh, you know le left part of the binary point. So the smallest number is basically one times two to, to the one, minus one twenty six. The largest value when you have uh, all one except this bit here, which is two fifty four. But remember again, this is a biased. So to the actual exponent, you must subtract the bias one twenty seven. It will be plus one twenty seven. And in that case, the significant will be all ones. So it will be one, and then you have 23 ones. Again, the one here. Uh, is all the time, you know, implicitly added. Okay. This is uh, multiplied by 2 to the power of 127. And 1.11123 one, ones is actually approximately equal to 2. So this number is actually 2 to the power 2127, which is that number here. Okay. For double precision, again, all zeros and all one ex in exponent is reserved for the same reason, for to represent infinity minus infinity and not a number. So the smallest exponent is when you have all uh, zeros except the least significant bit is one, but this is not the actual, you know, this is basically the biased exponent. So you must subtract one, uh, 023, it will be minus one, 022. And for the fractional part, it will be all zeros. And we're going to add the implicit significant of, of 1. So it will be 1 point all zeros 2 to the power of minus 1, 0, 22, which is approximately this number in decimal. The largest value when you have all the bits is 1 except the least significant bit because this is reserved. This number is 2046, but this is biased, so we should subtract the bias 1023, so it will be positive 1023. So the actual number is 1 point, then you have 52 ones. 2 to the power 1023. This is again approximately equal to 2, 2 to the power 123, which is that number here. Okay, guys, that, that was it for the IEEE standard for fractional uh, or floating point number. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.